of magnetic fields. And so we're talking about this phenomenon here uh, that discovered by Orsted in 1819 uh, that a B field is caused by a current carrying wire. And so, you know, the way you can sort of do this experiment and you'll do this, something like this in lab at some point, uh, you know, you got compasses and you uh, send a current through this wire and the compasses line up uh, along with the magnetic field. Like, like we've been talking about, you can use compasses to map out your magnetic field. And so this was the first time people realized uh, that magnetism was related to current, to the movement of charges, which, of course, we've been sort of talking about. You know, magnetic fields, uh, you can always find some moving charge uh, that's causing the magnetic field you're talking about. Uh, that's our theme so far in our discussions. And so let's just talk more about this. So this, this discovery, uh, the magnetic field from the wire, if you map it out, it looks like this. Okay, so again, in mag magnetism, things are inherently three-dimensional. And so here is this current going into the page. So you're seeing that X there, so it's going into the page. And the magnetic field curls around it uh, in, in uh, circles. So this would be like a magnetic field of a certain amount. This would be the same thing. Uh, and so just like with all of our magnetic fields, you know, tangent to that magnetic field gives you the direction of the magnetic field. They're closer together where the magnetic field is stronger. Um, and so we're going to introduce another right-hand rule uh, that can be helpful. That you'll, Again, you can, you can do this any way you want to, but this is just the way I think is nice to do it. Uh, so you take your thumb. So now this, this is, we're going to have a couple of these right-hand rules where your hand is kind of curly. So you put your thumb along with the current, and your fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. Okay? So I think this is one that people get down pretty good. Uh, and so how do we know when we should use the curling version of the right-hand rule uh, as versus the, the, the normal one? Well, we're going to talk a lot about this, and you're just being introduced to this. Uh, but, but basically, this, this curly one is one that helps us find the direction of a magnetic field from a wire. So it's a very particular one. Um, and so, you know, if, if you're making your age sheet, I would, you know, but put a little thing for right-hand rules. Say this one's basically just when trying to find the magnetic field from a current carrying wire. So it's very specific. But we'll try to sort of talk more about that. And so here's our magnitude. Uh, the book goes through and, and shows how to calculate this from the Biot-Savart law. Uh, and so the magnitude of the, of the magnetic field uh, that we're talking about here uh, looks like this. So that we've got a new constant now. All right, so we've got this new constant, uh, similar in sort of the magnetic version of epsilon naught, if you will. Um, and this constant is a little bit nastier. It's 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. So there's a factor of 4 pi there. We'll deal with this in a little bit, and we'll show how uh, this actually oftentimes doesn't come out to be too bad. Uh, but it's u naught times the current uh, divided by 2 pi r. And then, as we said, you can use your curly right-hand rule uh, to figure out what direction this magnetic field is. And so... I think that leads us to our first uh, question from last night, uh, which is this here. And we did pretty good on it last night, but let's go see how everyone's doing on it right now. Bless you. So what is the current direction in the wire and the figure? So we've got a, a wire and a figure, and they're giving you the map of the magnetic field on the side there. And so I want to know is which way is the current going in that wire? So let's see what we think about that. Talk to your neighbors. Let me know what you think. Okay, so it looks like I think most of us have answered, so let's go ahead and talk about this one. And I, I agree with the majority, so we did, so we improved on our, our answers from last night. Uh, but this is again just using this uh, new curly right hand rule. And again, this, this is you know, sort of an example of how tricky some of these pictures can be. So, so what we're seeing here is the dots on one side 
are telling us that the magnetic field is coming out on this side, and the cross over here is telling us that it's going in over there. So if we were to you know, try to draw a picture of this, uh, it would look something uh, like so. You know, you'd sort of have you know, this, this curly direction is going like this, and the arrow would be kind of going this way here. Okay, so not sure that helped much, but we'll do another one here. Right, and so that's the, the curly direction. So your fingers come out on the one side, they come in on the other side, and if you do that, your thumb is pointing down, which I think most of us had. So I think the, the big tricky part with this, this one in particular here is just this idea that you know, these pictures can be really tricky to visualize. Okay, so let's do one that's a little bit trickier and it involves a couple different topics. So this one uh, is gonna involve stuff from last time. Okay, so this is a trickier picture. We didn't do quite as well as this one last night. But let's talk about it with our friends. So we have a positive charge cruising with some velocity towards a wire. The magnetic field of the wire is going into the page. So I wanna know is the proton will do what? Which one of these things will our proton do? So talk about this with your neighbors and see what you think. Okay, so I think that's everybody. So let's go ahead. So if you haven't actually got an answer in, just put an answer in. Again, we're not judged on whether we're right or not. Uh, just to make sure that you are participating here. Um, and so let's look at this one here. Uh, and so there's a little bit of confusion. Uh, D and B seem to be the two most popular answers. Uh, and unfortunately, in this case, it's, it's B. So let's Let's talk, I see some people dancing in the audience, yeah. Um, so this is definitely a controversial one. And so you need to use sort of two different ideas about the magnetic field. Anybody want to tell us what they were thinking about this one? Maybe the dancing person, yeah. Uh-huh. And so which way was that magnetic field going when you did that? Okay, so pointing upwards, okay. Yeah, so so I, I so I, I like your 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 rationale of like the the directions of the the magnetic field, and my guess is that most people got that. So let's just look here, and I can kind of show you uh, uh, my picture of this. So again, I, I if you if you so the magnetic field. This is a horrible circle. Sorry about that. But the magnetic field around a current carrying wire makes a circle, right? And in this case here, if I put my thumb into that direction, okay, the magnetic field is going to be going clockwise. All right, so it's going to be on clockwise, so sort of a, a direction kind of like this here. And what that means is right here at this point where the, elect where the proton is about to hit, the tangent at that point, which would be our magnetic field, points up. Okay, and I, like I said, I think most people agreed with that. Okay, and so, so that, that answer D, I think people were thinking about this kind of like an electric field, is, is my guess. 
uh, which is, of course, easy to do since we're just learning this stuff. But the magnetic field is a little bit more complex, right? And so in this case here, you've got to use our right-hand rule from last time, okay, over here. And so that right-hand rule was like our thumb is with the velocity, our fingers point to the magnetic field, and your palm points the direction of the force. So the force is out of the screen towards you guys. So the path this particle would take is it would you know, come out of the screen. And if you imagine that this wire is sort of continuous above your heads, it would crash into the wire somewhere in front of the screen. OK? Um, so if you look at the, you guys' answers from last night, uh, so, so here, the, the correct answer was sort of what we were saying there. So, you know, the thumb at the velocity, the right-hand rule, and the wire tells us the field is clockwise. Uh, so it's upwards where the proton is. And then they did the, the, the right-hand rule to find the force. And then I think you know, the most popular incorrect was saying, okay, so they got the same thing. They figured the direction of the magnetic field. And so then they said, therefore, the proton will be deflected up. And so it's just that second part. It doesn't work like an electric field. The magnetic field force is more complex with this right hand rule. Okay, questions on that, anybody? I think it's a pretty tricky one. Okay, so the good news is the people who, the majority who got it you know, wrong, they sort of had the first part right, so that's, that's good. All right, let's try another one. Just to, we're trying to sort of hit at kind of common issues people have with this stuff. So here's a, an old test question. Um, so you got two long straight wires, uh, and I've got, uh, a charge Q located here and here with a velocity V. It's the same velocity, the same distance from the wire. The only difference is, in this case, uh, the particle is moving off at like an angle there. Okay? And so we want, to, we want to compare the strength of the magnetic force on Q in the two cases. Okay? Case A and case B. So think about this. And again, this is one that, that deals with stuff from today, but also stuff from last time. So you might need to go back and look at this stuff from last time a little bit. Let's think about this and talk to your neighbors and see what we get. Okay, so let's talk about this one. I think most of us have answered. This is another tricky one, I think. Let's see what the consensus is. So, so I'll go ahead and call time, and then let's see what our Oh. <laughs> okay, so it looks like people are, yeah. Okay, so that's good. Well, that, that, this is good. This is the teachable moment, right? That's what that means. Um, so if you go back, uh, so, so our definition for the force here was this, this cross product. And one way to write out the cross product, the magnitude of the cross product, which is, of course is what we're looking for. We're looking for the strength of it, which is just the magnitude, okay? And so it's, you know, the magnitude of uh, the charge, the velocity, the magnetic field times sine of the angle theta. So the big question here is the sine of the angle theta. Anybody remember what that theta is the angle of from last time? So we talked about it, but it's the kind of thing that, you know, again, with different pictures and these three-dimensional setups can be really nasty. Um, so, so that angle that we're talking about is the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. Okay, so let's try something a little different here. Let's go ahead and just, let's just try that one again, now that we sort of see that. Okay, think about this again with your neighbors and see if you change your mind. So that angle theta is between the velocity and the magnetic field. So think about what that is in both cases. Okay. 
Okay, so let's let's look at this here. So when you're when you're doing this problem, so again, what, what the, the key here is is we're trying to find the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. And so if we do our new right hand rule, what's going to be happening? Well, the magnetic field is going to be coming out of the page in both cases, right? So the magnetic field is the same in both cases. Everyone cool with that? And so it's coming out of the page. And so if, if we take like this thing here, the actual magnetic field vector would be an arrow pointing like this here. All right, so what's the angle between this eraser that I'm holding and that velocity V there? 90 degrees. What's the angle between that eraser and the velocity in the first case? 90 degrees, right? So, so this works out that this here should be equal at that particular moment, right? I mean, the, the, the next second, things could change or whatever. But at that particular moment, um, they're equal. And it should be C. So that's a really tricky one. And it kind of really hits home on this idea of what angle that we're talking about. And also, like I said, this trend of these three-dimensional pictures being tricky to visualize. So I'm trying to sort of show examples of some of the utmost trickiness. Questions on this? Here. Okay. Okay, so here's the, you can just sort of draw a picture, just sort of some follow up here. Um, so again, the magnetic field would be pointing out of the page. And if we do our flat right hand rule in the two cases, you get a force, in this case, the force is right towards the wire. In this case, the force is at this direction here. But again, the strength of it. QVB sine theta, this is sine 90 in both cases. And so since the B field, the velocity, and the Q are the same, uh, the force, the magnitude, the strength has to be the same. OK? OK, so announcements. I don't necessarily have announcements. Sine theta, the force on a current, OK, so, or the force on one charge. Well, if we have a whole current doing this, right? OK, so we have like a current carrying wire. That's nothing but just a bunch of charges moving with some velocity. OK, so we can have a very similar uh, equation uh, telling us about the force um, on a, a current carrying wire. And so all we do is we look at it here and we say, OK, well, if I have a whole bunch of charges moving, I sort of multiply by a 1, where it's like time over time. And so uh, Q divided by T is the current, and velocity times time is some length. And so you get this new equation. Again, we use in the, almost the same way as this one, uh, but it's the uh, the current now. And so it's the same kind of philosophy. So if you have one charge that feels a force, then if you have many, they'll feel a force too. OK? Uh, and you can use the same right hand rule, which is nice about it. So it's the same right hand rule. It's just you're doing it uh, for a bunch of charges instead of just one. And so we can look here at instances where there's two wires and whether or not those wires will feel a force. And so here's a wire coming out at you guys. OK, and so if we figure out the magnetic field for that wire, you can do your right hand rule. So your thumb comes out, and on that side over there, the B field will be pointing up. OK, so it's a magnetic field pointing up over there. And you put another uh, wire. So now this wire is coming out at you guys, and now what we do is we do our right hand rule. So with that second wire, I say, OK, the velocity is coming out at you guys. The magnetic field goes up. That's my fingers. So thumb, fingers, and my palm points that way. OK, so when you have two wires in the same direction, they're going to feel a force of attraction. OK, and so hopefully, so the, the idea here is hopefully, you know, going through these right hand rules makes sense to you. But the other thing is that you want to be able to kind of have this as being one of those things in the back of your head that wires in the same direction attract and wires in opposite direction go the opposite ways. You can just kind of save you time on a lot of different kinds of problems. And so here, uh, the same sort of idea. If I have that wire coming out at you guys, the magnetic field points up. And so if I then do my a wire going into the page, so my thumb goes in, my fingers go with the B field, and the force is away. And so the force is repulsion. Um, 
So currents in the same direction attract, currents in opposite direction repel. So again, you hopefully want to understand the steps you went through, but if you kind of remember that, it can save you time when you're doing problems. And so for an example of that, we've got a problem here to do, um, this one here. So we've got three current carrying wires, two coming out, one going in, and we want to know is, uh, what is the direction of the force on the top wire due to the two ones below? And assume the wires carry equal magnitude of current. So go ahead and discuss this one with your neighbors and see what you think. Okay, so I think we're doing pretty good. And I think what can help some people is you can kind of think about this sort of like charges, right? So with charges, like charges repel, opposite charges attract. This is sort of the opposite. If you've got two wires with current in the same direction, they're going to attract. If you've got them in the opposite direction, they're going to repel. So it's sort of the opposite of what you might think uh, just thinking about charges. And so in this case here, if we look at this one, uh, we can... And so I, I get left, which I think the majority of people got to, so that's good. Um, and if you look at this here, uh, when I think about it, again, you can go through just all the stuff that I just went through. Um, but you can also think about it like this here. So on that first one, right, so these are two wires that are in the same direction coming out at you, so they're attractive force. Um, and then uh, these guys here are opposite, so there's a repulsion force. Since they have the same current, these two arrows are essentially uh, the same length, are going to be the same length. And so it's one of those deals where basically the up and down part cancels, and the part going to the left uh, will be the part that remains. Okay? And so you can, that can be helpful uh, in numerical questions as well, stuff like that. Okay. And so here's just then a summary, because it is tough. You know, I think it's really easy at this point to kind of mix up uh, electric and magnetic. So there's a summary of sort of how these work. Uh, so for electric, electric fields, the source is charges. They act on other charges no matter what those charges are doing. Uh, the magnitude of the force was uh, electric field times charge. And the direction of the uh, force is parallel to the electric field. And so now with magnetic, it seems to be that what's happening is moving charges are the key. So a magnetic... Uh, field, uh, the source of it will be a moving charge. It'll act on moving charges. And our magnitude of the force is, of course, trickier than this one. And then, and then the direction is also trickier using this right hand rule. So this, uh, basically these two things, you can see that magnetism is just a little bit more confusing than the electric field. All right, so here's, uh, uh, again, an old test question. So here's two wires. Uh, wires A and B, and they're located at uh, position uh, two meters away from the origin. Uh, the, the two wires carry uh, three amps coming, uh, one of them's coming out, one of them's going in. And we want to know is what is BY, the Y component of the magnetic field at the origin? Okay, and so that's what we want to try to find out. And so let's just, to start out, let's just ask ourselves uh, a quick clicker question on this, but not the one that's asked here. Let's just ask ourselves, do we think the magnetic field in this case is going to be positive, negative, or zero? So let's go ahead and just make our own clicker question. So A, B, C. So A thinks that we're going to th it's going to point in the positive Y direction. B thinks it'll be zero. And C thinks it'll point in the negative Y direction. So let's just think about that. So at, that, at the origin there, so that kind of goes along with the answers there. Which one do you think it's going to be just by looking at the picture? Thank you. 
Okay, so let's look here at our responses. So again, kind of mixed up. So a bunch are thinking it's positive, a bunch are thinking it's zero, and a little bit thinking it's negative. So let's just draw ourselves pictures here. Okay, so now if you remember, again, this magnetic field makes a circle. So here's the circle for that one, and here's a circle for that one. And so we got to look at this picture and find out which way are those circles pointing. So we're talking here about a point on the origin. Right? And so if you look at this wire A, my thumb comes out and it's going to curl in a counterclockwise direction. Right? And so for that A, it's going to be pointing sort of this away, which means right here, the, oh, sorry, that's up. Um, at this point right here, the magnetic field from A is going to be pointing up. If I do the same thing for the B, it goes in, and so it's going to have oh, a different direction this way here, and again, the same idea. So it's going to be pointing uh, that direction as well, okay? And so in both cases, just by doing the right-hand rule, you can see that it has to be pointing, both of them are going to be pointing upwards at that particular point, okay? Which is, again, as you can see, tricky idea to get out, okay? So questions on that, anybody? And so it turns out to be that way, and we'll show you how to do it in a second, but just you know, kind of thinking about this ahead of time is super crucial, because like if this was a test question, okay, just sort of looking at that picture, you know it has to be D or E right away, right? And so even if you kind of make a mistake on the rest, then you got it down to like a 50-50 choice or something. So that can be a helpful way. So let's actually look at this problem. And so again, our magnetic field is this equation we just talked about, u naught 2 pi r, where r is the distance from uh, the wire you're talking about to the magnetic field. So in our particular case here, in both cases, our r would be this distance here, which is, you know, 2 meters, uh, as given in the problem. And so what I can say is my, my total magnetic field, uh, again, would be this new equation. So u naught, so this case, it would be the current A, over 2 pi times that radius um, plus u naught current B over 2 pi times that radius. And in this particular case here, right, uh, it's not evident right away, but you got the same current, you got the same radius, uh, and so basically this just works out to be, um, when you figured out that, two times just one of these calculations, so two times u naught 2 pi r, uh, or 2 pi times r. And so in writing this out, so if you remember, we talked about this u naught is this kind of nasty. It's 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. The units are tesla meters per amps. Um, but what's nice is when you got that 4 pi here divided by a 2 pi, what you can do is when you're writing this out, you can just say, well, it's 2 times 10 to the negative 7 tesla meter over amps. And you'll be surprised how often it works out that there's at least a factor of pi on the downstairs part, okay? And so this, this constant, even though it looks kind of nasty at first, will oftentimes work out to be a little bit easier like this. Uh, my current was 3 amps, and then once I do that on the bottom, it's just uh, 2 meters. And so when I plug that in, uh, I got uh, the magnetic field as being 6 times 10 to negative 7 Teslas. But again, you know, you need to be able to do that direction. On, on a problem like this, you know, typically it's not the math that's throwing people off. It's, it's finding the directions of the magnetic field. So sort of that, that picture we have on the previous slide is sort of the more crucial part. Questions on this, anybody? And again, you don't have to do this multiplying by two. You could add them up separately. It's totally fine. I just I was just trying to show that that's a nice feature. Okay, so let's look at uh, another one here, just more now looking at the magnetic field, uh, just again some more practice with finding that out. And so here we got two long wires, uh, one's going in, one's going out, so you can kind of see this is the one coming out at you, this is the one going in. And I want to find the magnetic field at this point x, which way is that going to be pointing? 
So let's think about that one. Okay, I think that's most everybody. So let's go ahead and call time here. Let's see, what we got okay, good. The, the clicker, middle finger. So I think we agree with that. Um, so the way I do this is again we use this new curly right hand rule we've introduced. And so here would be. Uh, the, the circle I would draw from that one. So it's going in, so it goes in a uh, clockwise fashion. And so the actual direction of the magnetic field would be like that. That's tangent to the circle, roughly. And in the other case, it would be going the opposite way. And so you get one of these deals where these, these arrows should be the same length. So the left and right part cancel, and so the total part pointing up is what uh, the magnetic field would be there. OK, again, just some more practice with our curly right hand rule. Okay, and here's one that's a little bit tougher. This is an old, again, an old test question. So there's a current carrying wire right here. Now here's what's tricky. So here's a current carrying wire, but there's also a uniform external magnetic field. That's what these X's are. So there's something else going on that's creating an external magnetic field uh, going into the page throughout the whole region here. And we want to know is at which point is the magnetic field the strongest, A, B, C, or D? Okay, so let's think about that and discuss here with your neighbors and see what you think. Okay, so let's talk about this one. Anybody want to tell us what they were thinking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's an explanation for C. Anybody else have a different thought? Okay, so, so I, I totally agree with that. And I think, uh, so if you look here, so I think the majority was there, but then E, so I think some people, you know, anybody want to sort of talk about just from the E point of view uh, where they were at? So I think C was the majority, but except if you don't include a lot of people on E. Anybody want to see what they were thinking there? But I agree completely with the explanation we just got. So if, if you do this new right hand rule to find out the direction of the magnetic field from this wire here, um, right, it's going to end up something kind of like this. So just from the wire, you're going to have, if you look at the magnetic field, it's going to be, again, it goes in circles. And if you do your thumb, it's going to curl around so it's pointing out over here and in over here. Okay? And so just a bigger picture, the B field from the wire would look kind of like this here. All 
All right? And so the B field from the wire on the top part is going to be canceling out the external magnetic field that we, again, we don't know what's causing it, but it's just there. And so at that point, the magnetic field will be less. We don't know what, but they're going to be canceling out. They're in different directions. But then for C and D, all the magnetic fields are in the same direction, so that'll be bigger uh, than the ones at A or B. And then like we were saying, we know that this depends on distance. The closer to the wire you are, the stronger the magnetic field is, so point C would be the one with the largest magnetic field. Questions here? Again, anybody want to explain or have a question about why E is not the answer? So E, there's like an external magnetic field caused by something else, but then we've got to sort of arrange that with what we know will be the magnetic field from the wire to figure out what the total would be. Okay, and so now we're going to move on to this here. Uh, which is going to lead us into the stuff we're going to talk about next. So we're going to be really interested in uh, magnetic loops uh, like this. And so this is a loop, some sort of weird current loop. So the current is going in the uh, counterclockwise direction, and we put it into an external magnetic field pointing that way. And I want to know is what's going to happen to that loop of wire. So we're going to be dealing with loops of wires for like the next week like this. So it's a really good thing to start with, sort of looking at this sort of from fundamental pictures. Okay, so let's look at this one here. So this is the kind of thing that we're going to get to the point where we sort of understand what's happening very quickly. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to learn like a new right-hand rule next time that explains this quicker, but I think it's nice to go through and just show how this just comes from the fundamental discussions that we've had so far. Okay, so you can kind of relate this. And so if you look at just, again, um, the flat right-hand rule, Okay, so let's look at sort of this leg of the wire here from B to C. Okay, so if I did, to take my, my thumb there from the B to C part, and I go you know, up with the current, and my fingers point with the magnetic field, the force is into the page. Okay? So right here, for this particular point here, the force is into the page, so you look like kind of like a little arrow thing like that. If you do this one, you're going to come up with the idea that the force is out of the page. Um, and again, this is just this, uh, the stuff we did last time. So like this one here, so if I go with the current, fingers at the B field, the force is in. Over here, it's down. Uh, and then if I, so you sometimes you got to twist yourself, so I twist it like this, and my fingers go like this, the force is out. What about from A to B? What's the force on the wire from A to B? Zero. So, so first, we know that whenever it's exactly parallel, there is no force. And secondly, if you're doing something with your hand that just isn't right, then that can sometimes imply. So, so if you try to get your thumb that way and then your fingers over there, you just can't do it, right? So that doesn't work. And so what's going to happen here is that these two forces will be equal and opposite. And so what will happen is this thing will rotate. And so the... the our answer here is oh, that that'll rotate there, which I think was what we had, uh, the majority of us had anyway, uh, so that's good. But questions on that? Because we're going to deal with this idea a lot next time. Okay, so I'll be down here if you have more questions. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.